The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. Hey, welcome to Standing in Faith. My name is Kat, and I'm in the studio with Jeff. Here I am. Rochelle. Hi. And David. Hey. Today's name is, um, maybe I should let Rochelle pronounce this, Jehovah Skidnu? Tzaddik. Tzaddik. Whoa. Wow. That's not what it looks like. <laughs> Again? Tzaddik. Tzaddik. It's, it's a T-S or a T-Z yeah. sound. Tzaddik. Yeah. yeah, you don't say Oh my just goodness! I, I guess I'm just a very American. Sadic. Just kidding you. <laughs> wow! All right. So this is God, my righteousness. Righteousness. What in the world does righteousness mean? Justification, deliverance, victory, right thinking, being right in the eyes of God, in your character, your conscience your action, your word. I like the word upright because it's like double meaning. It's like what your face is turned towards literally. Um, there's this uprightness about it where you're looking up and the Bible keeps showing us all the way through that to be righteous is to believe or to look up or to be upright. I like that posture idea. I'm going to totally date myself, but it makes me think of, oh, years and years and years ago, it was a real popular saying to say, oh, righteous dude, <laughs> a righteous man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Righteous. Well, you totally had the righteous, righteous brothers, too. Yeah. 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 Righteous. I mean, that used to be a popular thing to say, oh, righteous. Um. <laughs> and ironically, that was like a surfer language too and like you'd be watching these gorgeous waves and all of creation and be like righteous, righteous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> looking up at this crashing wave <laughs> well i i think i at least for me i think it goes back to the garden where um sin crept in mm -hmm. and our unrighteousness began yeah and i guess Simply for me, it's to be in right standing with God. But I liked what you guys, those other words that you used. I think it's it's interesting. It, it, it's kind of the theme here of these names being restorative in nature. Oh. Right? It restored back that which was lost. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in the days of the garden, Adam and Eve were in a righteous place. They were, they had a good standing. In heck, every day they stroll through the garden with God. And yeah, hang out intimately, and explore, and yeah, there, there was an intimacy there, and um, that was lost, but now it's been restored. Yeah, we talked last week about Melchizedek, and in the Hebrew, the Malik is king, and Tzadik is righteous one or priest, or holy, or set apart one. So in Judaism, a tzaddik, or tzaddikim, is plural for tzaddikot. There's different ways you can say that a group of righteous men or women, a group of people who are f people of faith. Um, in Judaism, a tzaddik is what you strive to be. It's what you're always striving for. You want to be a tzaddik. It's like a mensch, if you know Yiddish. Such a mensch, such a good boy, such a good <laughs> man. So it's a way of saying... You are an actual being of righteousness. It's interesting that you're using the word striving. I, I caught right up on that. Yeah, with it. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, because um, in Romans 3, it says, therefore, mm. no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Mm. It's just through the law that we're conscious, conscious, conscious of, of sin. sin. Yeah. Yeah. And then it goes on in verse 21. But now a righteousness from God apart from law has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There's no difference, Jew, Gentile. We're all sinned. We've all mm -hmm. fallen short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus, Messiah. 
God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. Um, I went and looked up the word righteousness because mm-hmm. I was curious. Um, and one of its meanings is acceptable to God. Which Accepted. I was mm-hmm. Kind of a cool way to think yeah. about it. Um, or approved. Mm-hmm. Right, so I'm, there's, there's that word shows up in different ways, right? So Jesus goes around doing good, approved of God, right? Yeah. It, that's that word righteous, righteousness yeah. of God. Um, and then obviously in 2 Corinthians 5.21, Jesus actually again fulfilled this. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that Judaism strives for righteousness, yet Jesus made that available through, as you read, Cat and Romans, grace. Yeah. Not works, but grace. Mm -hmm. Well, too, what blinded him was that this whole right relationship to an ethical or legal um, standard became their God as opposed to, you know, the God of love, God of grace. And uh, so the law became God in essence. And that's how, that's why all the judgments came as a result of it too. I heard a really great visual story the other day about a house, if you walk into a house and there's a bunch of kids running around like my house hmm. and the parent has put sticky notes all over the house, do not use the washcloth to wipe your poop. <laughs> do not <laughs> pee on the carpet. Do not X, Y, Z. You would walk into that house and be like, wow, these kids really need a lot of instructions. Like they're, they must be pretty bad. And I thought that was such a cool analogy of like, God didn't provide these laws because that's the kind of God he is. He provided it because that's the kind of kids we were. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It exposes our sin. Yeah. And I love that those who desire God and have a zeal for God, they know not the righteousness of God because they're so trying to find it. They can't just sit and receive it. There's a spiritual blindness that is for a reason. Um, I really like what you said, Jeff, about the garden, that when you look at righteousness, the righteousness of God that we see with the full scope of the New and Old Testament together as one thing, we get the the hindsight of seeing how good God is from the garden all the way to now, the free gift of grace and righteousness. But if you weren't aware of that full picture, um, what is the opposite of righteousness? What would be the opposite? We know it's to not believe. But if you were really genuinely seeking God and you had a zeal for God and you didn't know the full scope, what would non-righteousness look like? What would it be to not be righteous? If you were seeking, but you weren't righteous, what would be the opposite of being righteous? I mean, the easy answer is unrighteous, but (laughs) what does that mean? Yeah. I think Christianity, or us as believers, we... um, are very, it's very easy for us to explain our righteousness comes from Jesus. Mm-hmm. But how do you explain that to somebody who has no idea what you're talking about? Do you not love God? Like, are you doing X, Y, and Z to stay righteous, or are you not? Um, uh, this is going to be a roundabout answer to your question. So um, I guess maybe two weeks ago, we were walking through the neighborhood, and we noticed that there was a completely dead tree in one of our neighbor's front yards. I'm th- The bark was falling off of it. This thing was dead. Um, and I went up and knocked on the door and said to the, to the, the lady that answered the door, I'm, do you need help with dealing with this tree? Cause I, I have a chainsaw and it's gone and she gone. The, <laughs> The macho in me rises up when I get my chainsaw out. Yes. And I can get dirty <laughs> and sweat, and I can knock down a tree. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, that's I. Th- there's just there's something in my male DNA yes. that kicks yeah. into gear and says, "Oh, yeah, growl." Yeah. Right, and so and of course they said, "Yeah." 
So in, I mean, it was so dead. <laughs> so in a day, well, not even a day, maybe six hours, tree was down, all sectioned off, bundled, packed up, sitting at the, the curb of the street. Mm -hmm. And what remained was the base of the trunk. Stump. Um, the, the stump now has been a very different scenario. It's taking quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been over there, and, and I've been speaking to this lady for hours at a time. And one of the things that we have been talking about is religion. I guess she would be Hindu. I'm I'm completely guessing. Mm -hmm. I'm not really quite sure. Um, our conversations are very um, New Agey language. Mm -hmm. So, as we've been sitting there and having conversations, yesterday's conversation was all about religion and rules and how that produces, at least in me. Nothing but shame. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, Unrighteous. I, I can't. I can't do it. Right. I mean, uh, I'll be sitting there and I'll be swinging an axe and it'll bounce back and hit my my leg and I'll cuss and I'm like, well, yeah, there it is. There's. I certainly can't keep up with all these requirements. Right. So that's what we had a conversation about. Is is how. It's all about, to the word that you used earlier, striving. Yeah. And, and what I said to her, the beauty mm -hmm. of pu the beauty of followers of Jesus is that you don't have to strive. You just have to accept mm -hmm. that free gift of, in this case, we're talking about righteousness, mm -hmm. but I can't make myself right. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I have, um, I had an impure thought on the way over here. I mean, this guy in front of me is going 15 miles an hour down the Cary Parkway. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, that's risky. Um, it's more like the Daytona 500. <laughs> anyway, so I, I know it's just all day long, every day. I'm very aware of the areas where I have, I would consider myself to have fallen short. Mm -hmm. Now, it's what I do with that. That makes me either living in his righteousness, right? He was righteous, and I shouldn't be ashamed of the fact that I'm having a bad day. I had a bad thought. I said a bad word. Okay, I've done those things. I feel, I feel compelled to want to be better, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's not that I have to strive to earn a position. In this case, with his righteousness— I don't have to strive. I can accept. And then I start to live in that as opposed to against that. Yeah. So that's the answer to your question is righteousness in my mind is living in right what he's set up, which is a, a good position between God and I, or striving to earn it and make myself acceptable when I'm already accepted. Mm -hmm. Identity again. Mm -hmm. or keep coming back to that. Yeah, I think that when we when we look at righteousness in the context of either striving or doing anything that we do would be our righteousness would be, you know, the Isaiah passage, I believe filthy it's Isaiah rags. passage Jeremiah. like filthy rags. Yeah. yeah. Um and I won't describe that, but uh, it. I think we have to constantly go back to recognize that we're clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. That he fulfilled the law, he never sinned, and as a result of believing in him, opening our lives, he comes in, he clothes us in his righteousness. Now, it's a thought I had. You had a bad thought coming to work. I can think of a lot worse thoughts than that on the highway. But what if you hadn't have done anything? Were you still clothed in his righteousness? Yes. Yeah. Because once you... I'm accepted, I'm acceptable. Okay. 
But does right is righteousness then conditional to how I live? My answer to that would be yeah, no. Okay. What if I'm what if I'm uh, someone and I'm uh, let's just assume I wasn't married, okay. single, and I was cohabitating with another woman, right? Yep. Would I still be clothed in righteousness? Yes. Okay. But you, yes, but you are. Yeah. But that's where conviction starts to enter in. Yeah. Because if you are clothed in righteousness, uh-huh. you, you're you don't want to willfully sin. Right. But even if, though you do, you might try to justify it in your mind. Yes. As oh. How can something so right be so wrong? Mm-hmm. Or, I hear if that I lot. love this person, how can it be wrong? Mm-hmm. Right? So, and, and so in other words, what you do is you either delude or deceive yourself. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's tons of deceptions out there. Exactly. Tons it, and tons and tons right. and tons of them. It's pervasive I mean, right now. Yeah. That's how Eve ultimately ate the fruit. She was deceived, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and what is the root of all deceptions? That w- essentially you're clothed, in yeah, in righteousness. Yeah. Well, God's still holding something back from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just plain selfishness. Mm-hmm. You know, selfishness is an amazing thing because we want what we want, right? So, if this is something that we really want. There's got to be a way we can figure out, find the loophole and mm-hmm. all that kind of crap that we that, that typically gets thrown out there that we'll do in order to make it, quote, right. And there is so much of what you're talking about mm-hmm. in Christendom right That's now. Right. Yeah. Right. There's so many people Calling that it are the grace after the gospel. power of God. They're after, actually, they're after revival. Yeah. But honestly... For what purpose? Yeah. What purpose do you seek that? Is it to just sit in his intimate presence? Or is it you want a church to grow? Or Mm -hmm. it's all rooted, if you ask me, in motivation. And unfortunately, if I look at my own motivations, oftentimes my own motivations are selfishly driven or ambitious. Yeah, I think we will always have a little mixture in that context, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's always going to be. Um, uh, but isn't that the point? I mean, Apostle Paul, he was doing all these amazing things by the power of the Holy Spirit. And yet he said, oh, wretched man that I am I, who will save me from this body of sin and death? Like the higher up you try to be righteous, the farther you can fall and slam and find yourself completely lost and saying, wow, I need a Messiah because I can't do this. And that's the point, right? Mm-hmm. That's where we want to get to as Christians, as we mature, that we no longer just eat the spiritual milk. We can move on behind the veil. In Hebrews, it says, as you mature on this feast of Christ, you start to want more than just attaining to some temple with some God. You get to become behind the veil where you enjoy where you rest, where you dwell in that, but that Paul says over and over, there's almost like this pull, this gravitational pull. You said about striving, like I want to get to the point where I'm no longer striving. For me, my experience has been I'm striving to not strive. I'm trying. I'm, I know that there's a gravitational pull pulling me into religion always because of my sin and death and this, oh, wretched man that I am I. There's this gravitational flesh that pulls me to want to try to be good or try to not sin, or try to avoid X, Y, Z. And I try, I'm telling you guys, I try to do a diet probably every six weeks. (laughs) About day two, I quit. I strive to no longer strive and to give it to the Lord and to sit in behind the veil where I can rest with him and know he's in charge and I'm one with him rather than trying to be Ned Flanders from The Simpsons, Heidi Ho, and love everybody (laughs) and do everything for everybody all the time. And then you keep going, and then you fall hard. Mm -hmm. You fall hard from that that place. So what you're describing, right, is the need for transformation in your mind 
and and obviously your heart. The renewing right? of your mind. So that's why this is so important is to to work through these things, these magnetic pulls back into the flesh. your natural man, your flesh, right? Your desires, right? That's to me that goes back to all right. What is in my, what am I thinking? about this what am i feeling about this and why is that pull there when in fact see this is the cool thing about these names these names to me are are oh what's the right word um continual that's not the right word Drawing but they're back. they're continual promises of the redemptive nature of Christ this so my provision my peace my presence, my righteousness, those are the ones we've covered so far. Those things, that that is a, we need them every day. We That's need them right. every moment, right? And how do we attain to that? I believe it's through rest, recognizing that, that he's, in, it's with him and he is in us doing this work. And that what we're responsible for is taking our thoughts and our emotions, our motives, or and putting them honestly at his feet That's at right. the cross. Mm-hmm. Hebrews three twelve says, "See to it, brothers, that none of you." And this is brothers. He's talking to believers mm-hmm. that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. And it goes back to that that whole thing that uh, of being clothed in his righteousness. I mean, I think that's a, he, the spirit of God walks in never to leave. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit. So we're his, the identity, the acceptance. Um, but if, if, if we continue like the passage she just read in that kind of deception, it gets worse. And whatever, the, and I think it comes down to this. I think the idea of sin or anything else that we re, that, that we do or anything that God says that we try to justify and rebel against, ultimately we sow what we reap. Whatever we sow into that particular thing, we'll reap back. Mm-hmm. And then we blame, of course, then people run around blaming God or saying, oh, God's punishing me because I did this, right? No. No, you you are pun- you actually entered into your own. Uh, those are your wages. Those are the wages of what of what you're of what you've done. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You did this. You've done this to yourself, um, and you've walked out of that rest. So that then you then you're not ever really. You, you wonder where's that peacefulness that I've had with God before, you know. And then you then you try to you know, the one thing you cannot counterfeit is God's peace. Yeah. You know? And and if we keep our hearts turned towards God and keep our hearts in belief and encourage our own souls and encourage each other, um, John three twenty one says, Whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done, like the restoration, the redemption, all that, has been done through God. So there it is again, like it's God who we just keep our hearts turned towards him. We keep our our belief in him. We we keep our hearts tender and just that turning, that uprightness. And uh, and then he's the one who will cleanse us. Yeah. And he's the sadic. I, yeah. I believe that we all have deceptions. We yes. all have them. Yeah. And if you think you don't have a deception, then you're deceived. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Because we all have them. Yeah. They're they're in the form of beliefs. They're in the form of feelings often, right? They're, they're, they're tied together. And many cases, they're ungodly, right? They're not true. Mm-hmm. They may be based on our experiences and things that we believe untrue about what's happened to us. The, the bottom line in, in my head comes down to this. Following Jesus... There, are, there aren't requirements other than for us to accept what he's done for us. That's the requirement, is to accept it and to believe that he actually is who he says he was. He's the son of God. Um, now, every other 
world religion, and in some cases Christianity, has set up like rules and things that you need to do or not do. Right? You need to. You need to. To repent, you need, and I'm just picking on Christianity, you need to repent, then you need to get baptized, and after you're baptized, then you need to do this, and then you, and, and it starts to give you all these things that you need to do, and then Which you need to go out, and you need to tell all your friends and family about it, and you need to, you know, I'll right. stop. Yeah, but that is an obedience to Jesus, but it's not what, but makes, it's not us what makes us righteous, righteous. and yeah, it doesn't help being you. Obedient. Some people are really good at that, though, Yeah, at doing those things, and some people are not, and they're the same righteousness covered in the same person who is righteous yeah jesus yeah but let's not mistaken that there's going to become a time where christ is going to look at some of us and say i, I don't know i don't know, know who you, you are mm-hmm. but and we did all these things these things. wonderful things mm-hmm. in your name ah, i didn't ask I, you to do that that I don't wasn't know me who you are. yeah so even in his name think about that uh-huh. i know i've had to evaluate things i've done in his name and say did he call me to that oh uh, yeah or was that me doing religion? Like Peter cutting off the servant's ear in the garden. Righteously, angry. And God said, what are you doing? <laughs> well, the, the point I, I guess I'm trying to get to is even Christianity, religion in general, in my mind, has set up uh, almost these impossible gates, and it leads us back to striving, right? And it makes us feel shame and if I'm ashamed, then how on earth could I ever be acceptable to God? I'm not even acceptable to myself, and I can't live up to all these standards. I, I see the, the, the dichotomy in what could happen. Now, is and it I, the commands that make you feel um, shame, or is it your own deception that makes you feel shame? It's striving. Because the commands of Jesus— I think it's failure. Failure to Ultimately, obey the commands. it comes to failure. Yeah, but is your failure to be obedient, is it... Well... Like, what's causing the shame The When you say obedient, Jesus what, do you mean? what do you mean by obedient? Well, you you said it's your... What did you say? Is your failure... Your uh, failure of what? Failing to live up to what... The requirements of religion. That's right. So do you mean the requirements of religion or just the requirements of Jesus? Like of what Jesus, like his, you know, just his commands. Well, you can, I think it's a fine line, Kat. Yeah. So mm-hmm. to, to your point, right, Jesus said, go out and make disciples of all nations. All right, well, I, I, I don't feel like I've done that. So is that my failure? And am I therefore not righteous because I haven't made disciples of all nations? No, I don't believe that. Not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you said obedient. Yeah, I think what Rochelle is saying, and I agree with what Rochelle is saying, I want to be obedient to what God has for me. Mm-hmm. And maybe Jeff isn't, you need to make disciples out of all nations. Maybe Jeff is, you need to do X, Y, and Z. That's yeah. what I'm asking Jeff to do. Um now, do I share the gospel when I get a chance? You bet your life yeah. I will. I mean, you're, you're neighbor lady. I'm pretty bold. You can't help yeah. it. That's the thing. I'm pretty bold. But I guess what I'm trying to, to differentiate is it's a heart issue. Yes. If my heart is it recognizing that God has made me righteous, I accept that free gift, I'm not beating myself up, and I'm walking out what I feel like he's calling me to do and to be, I think I'm in a really good spot. Now, if I'm doing those things, I'll, let's be honest. I am not doing this so that, that God heals Liz of her sickness. Amen. Yeah. Uh-uh. That would be a very selfish, manipulative, controlling, yes. and it, that puts me honestly in a witchcraft that's position. Cain. And God does that's not the accept of bribes. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. So, but that's not why I'm doing this, by the way, right? Yeah. I, I'm doing it because I felt the tug that said, th- this one needs help. Yeah. She needs help. And she does. It's turning out that she does. Mm-hmm. So, but that's why I'm doing it. Not, I mean, Liz is a different story. I'm, babbling all over the place here so good but what i'm trying to get to though is ultimately following jesus isn't a bunch of you need to do x y and z to earn your position 
That's what I'm saying. Correct. I don't have to do a, a series of prayers. I don't have to do a series of fastings. I don't have to chastise myself. I don't have to whip myself. I don't have to beat myself. I, I don't have to do those things. You're already in the covenant. Exactly. But I think far too many, I, I think that there's Christian organizations and then there's. It a, creeps in. A, every world religion has this mm-hmm. earning it. Yeah. associated to it. And that's really what I'm trying to get to is the point that with with the name God, my righteousness, that Jesus fulfilled for us mm-hmm. as part of the new covenant, that is abolished. Yeah. My quote unquote earning it is no it's longer over. needed. Yeah. yeah. All other religions in the world all say do, do, do. Yeah. Right. That's exactly it. It's it, and and really at reality, it's a lot of do do. Um, mm-hmm. But but <laughs> took me a second. If yeah, it's a lot of poopy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, all the doing in order to, and I mean, even in the re- relationship to what you said, I'm not doing this just to get Liz healed or anything like that. No, because that and that's a very that's that's exactly what other religions base stuff on. I need to appease this God somehow in order to get him to do something I need. And that's witchcraft. Well, it's witchcraft. It's it's just it's, it's just basically uh, the religions of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been with us since outside the garden. Yeah, it's yeah. in us. That's the part that freaks you out as a believer. You have to come to realize daily. I have a leaning towards religion. It's the flesh. Mm-hmm. It's seeing things carnally rather than in the spirit. It's not having faith versus having faith. Yeah. But to stay in that place where he, your eyes can see in the spirit, not looking at it carnally, man, it's hard. But as soon as you know that righteousness is a person, that you can sit next to him and be with him and clothed in him, I feel like God has given us so many ways to to participate in him. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. He is my justification. He is love. He is a person. Love is a person. Sanctification is a person. I I want to stay close to him at his feet. When I turn from him and I go outside of the protection of the garden, I'm exposed. Mm -hmm. I have chosen to open those doors to things that make me unrighteous, that make me outside of his love, that expose me to the seeds that will be planted, that will... birth or grow bad fruit. (laughs) And then I say, why am I out of the garden having this bad fruit? Oh, let me get back in the garden and learn the the fruits of the spirit like Ephesians 2 talks about. Yeah. While all other religions say do, 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 Christianity says done, done, done. And and the redemption of what Jesus did for us on the, the, the atonement itself, that alone is all that was needed to make us righteous. Mm-hmm. That the last once bit, and for all. The last bit of once and for all. Yeah. Yep. The Romans verses I read um, about God uh, presenting Jesus as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in His blood says He did this to demonstrate His justice. So compared mm-hmm. to all the other gods and false idols, God is like, this is my form of justice. That's right. Yeah, because. Uh, he did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Christ Jesus. So yeah. he's the just one, and he is the justifier. And that's not what other world religions offer you. Mm-hmm. Let's bless the listeners. You know, Holy Spirit... Fall on us in the studio here. Fall on those that are listening, wherever they may be. Fall on them. Bring your presence. Bring your wisdom and your knowledge to them that they may know just how much they are loved and just how acceptable they are Mm -hmm. As is. I bless them with an experience of just what I've prayed for. Just how acceptable they are.
God, I bless the listeners with believing hearts that turn towards you, that turn towards your grace and your mercy. Lord, I bless the listeners with a freedom, Lord, of deception, with a freedom to see truth, with a freedom and ability to walk with you, Holy Spirit, and experience shalom. Yes, I, I agree with all of this, and I... I pray that everybody, everyone, myself included, that can hear my voice, that we would surrender, that we would be able to receive the righteous one, the true tzaddik, the, the true one, capital O, one, righteous, the one who came and was born in earth, who was living here in earth, tempted in every way, suffered, died a horrible death on display for all to see. God, let us surrender. Let us give up. I pray that we give up. I pray that we give up trying and striving. I pray that you would continue to show us, as you did your prophets of old, that you were going to raise up one who was truly righteous, who we can truly rest in, not because of anything we have to offer. You don't want the sacrifices of bulls and incense. You've made the way that we can rest in that. If only we can surrender and let go, just let it go. Where, see, where striving cease, thank you, Jesus, that you are going to help us surrender every day to the righteous one, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.